My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of leaky heart valves. Right, we are blessed with four heart valves, two on the left side. These are known as the mitral and aortic valves and two on the right side. These are known as the tricuspid and pulmonary valves. Sometimes due to a congenital problem and acquired problem age related changes, these valves can start leaking. And when they do so to a very severe extent, they can adversely impact on a person's quality of life as well as their lifespan. The adverse impact of leaky valves is dependent on the severity of the leak as well as how quickly over a period of time that leak has developed. What I mean by this is that if a leak has de slowly developed over a period of time, then the heart has time to adapt and therefore patients may not really notice anything until the leak is really advanced. On the other hand, if a leak has developed very quickly, then the heart may not have had time to adapt and therefore the patient may become symptomatic even when the leak is not as severe. <coughs> the main problem is that um, is that leaky valves over a period of time can cause a condition called volume overload, meaning that with leaky heart valves, the overall blood volume that the heart has to contend with will increase over a period of time. I'll try and explain why this happens. My explanation is probably a little oversimplified, but hopefully it will help with understanding the basic concepts. Let's say that the heart hypothetically, I'm just using hypothetical figures here, has to pump out 100 mils of blood with each heartbeat. Okay, these are arbitrary figures. And let's say 10% of that 100 mils leaks back through the leaky valve. Well, now only 90 mils of blood have been pumped out because 10 has leaked back, 10 mils have leaked back. And therefore, our kidneys will only receive 90 mils instead of the 100 mils that they were expecting. The kidneys then behave as if the patient is dehydrated because they're getting less blood. And therefore, they will try and absorb more water from the urine to try and increase the blood volume back to what they expect. So again, very simplistically, they create another 10 mils of blood. So now, what is, now we have 110 mils in the system. Um, remember, we'd never really, we were never really short of 10 uh, mils. It was just that the 10 mils had leaked back, so it had not gone forward to the kidneys. Now the kidneys got less, and they've absorbed another 10 mils. So now we have a total of 110 mils in the system. But again, 10% of that 110 mils leaks back, and the kidneys still get less than what they were expecting and they then act, again try and absorb more water from the urine and produce more blood. So in essence, there is a vicious cycle that develops with less blood going to the kidneys, the kidneys increasing the volume within the system, and this results in more leaking of the heart valves. This is why this condition is known as a condition of volume overload. Slowly over a period of time, the amount of blood in the circulation increases. Now, the problem is that the heart eventually has to contain this blood because the heart has to contain all the blood in the system. And therefore, as the amount of blood is increasing, it causes the heart to stretch to try and contain all this blood. The heart behaves a little bit like a rubber band when it is stretched. So when you stretch it, it twangs back with more force. This is known as Starling's law. If you stretch it even more, it twangs back with even greater force but if you stretch it too much, then it loses its elasticity and then becomes weak. This is how rubber bands or elastic bands work. You know, when you, when you um, pull them apart, they twang back, pull them apart even more, they twang back harder. But at a certain point, they don't twang back, they just lose their elasticity. So this is what can happen with the heart. So as the leak progresses, the heart responds to the volume overload by contracting with more vigor because it's being stretched by this extra blood and it will contract with more vigor. But if this is left unchecked, then eventually it will start weakening. And this is something that you want to avoid because you may not be able to regain that strength again 
even after operating and correcting the leaky valve. So if you have a very leaky valve, there are two main reasons to consider an operation to fix the leaking. One, if the patient is symptomatic from the leak, and those symptoms are usually breathlessness, exercise intolerance, and progressive swelling, especially in the legs, which then goes up to the abdomen. If the patient is symptomatic with these, it is time for that patient to consider an operation. Remember, the patient is breathless because he's not able to push out as much blood as the body needs because so much of it is leaking back. He's intolerant of exercise for the same reason. He swells up um, with the leg swelling, the abdominal swelling, because of all this volume overload. So if the patient is symptomatic, then the valve needs fixing. If the patient is not symptomatic, so the patient is fine, but if we see that the heart is beginning to weaken, then again the valve needs fixing. How can we tell that the heart is weakening? Well, in leaky heart valves, you would expect the heart to beat with even more vigor than normal because the heart is containing more blood, it's stretching, and therefore it contracts with even more vigor. If the heart function on an echocardiogram looks normal or even slightly less than normal, then this is suggestive that the valve needs fixing. This is why when you have a leaky valve, the cardiologist will organize to see you at 6 to 12 monthly intervals where they should do two things. One, ask you about symptoms such as breathlessness, uh, exercise intolerance, progressive leg swelling. And also, apart from asking you about symptoms, they should also do an echocardiogram to see if your heart is looking weaker. If you have no symptoms and the heart looks strong, then it is very reasonable to continue with a wait and watch policy because in that setting the risks of an operation will probably outweigh the benefits. But if the patient has symptoms or the heart starts looking weaker, then the benefits of an operation will definitely outweigh the risks. The treatment of a leaky valve is usually an operation. However, most valve operations now are very routine, the operative risk is very low, and the patient is usually able to go home after five days and then over a period of time is able to go back to living a normal life. So I hope you found this little summary on uh, leaky valves to be useful. Um, I was recently in India and I met a few of the people who are kind enough to watch me and it was lovely, so um, I was delighted. Uh, once again, I am always, always so grateful for um, the support you give me. Thank you so much. All the best.